Hey everybody, Steve here. We're continuing on with God and His Word with Mark chapter 13, verses 24 to 37 to close out that chapter. Now, uh, we start off and it's where Jesus is talking about what's going to happen in regards to the destruction of the temple. Uh, you know, how, the, you know, even hopefully it won't happen on the Sabbath. And again, he was directing this discussion to his disciples and to those believers at that time. And uh, because, you know, we already talked about that. Uh, Jerusalem was sealed up on the Sabbath day. You couldn't go anywhere. And so if this happened, as we say, it had already happened in AD 70. And the other train of thought is that it is still going to happen in our future. But either way, we are called to know God and we're called to uh, keep watch and not to be deceived. Uh, we come to this passage, it says, but in those days after that tribulation, in other words, after that time of when we see the temple overrun, when we see the abomination of desolation, as we explained that it either happened in AD 70, back when the uh, zealots took over the Levitical priesthood, and which was an abomination because they weren't Levites, or when the Romans came in and they slaughtered everybody inside the temple, three to 5,000 people inside the temple, and actually uh, made their own sacrifices to Caesar as God and raised their Roman standards uh, the uh, flag that represented that was either the eagle or the vulture, uh, winged winged bird. But it says that after that tribulation, or it could mean sometime in our future, it says the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars of the heavens will fall and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Here, here's what's interesting is we need to be careful about what we're saying because I know a lot of people have taken this passage and this verse right here and said the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light. If the sun does not give forth its light, you cut it off, we're all going to freeze to death. And so there's many people who say, well, well, see, this is what's going to happen in our future, in the end times, and, uh, you know, don't be left behind in the Left Behind series and things like that. Well, we need to think that God set up these rules uh, and laws uh, for science and, and all these things, uh, that the sun will not be darkened. So in other words, if the sun is darkened and it doesn't give forth its light and the moon doesn't give forth its light because obviously the sun has been extinguished or, or that, that light has stopped, that heat, uh, everything on earth will die. So now you have to make, well, so God is making, he's going to do another miracle by keeping us alive and keeping the plants alive uh, because there will be no light. Enough, enough to the point of where the moon won't reflect the light. Wow. Um, and then it says the stars of the heavens will fall. Some people have actually said that this event is still in our future and that the stars will fall and they'll hit the earth. And that, uh, you know, that's why there's not going to be one stone on top of another. And I've heard so many different crazy conspiracy theories in regards to uh, this verse right here. Uh, we have to remember that if just one star hits the earth, that's pr that pretty much is going to kill everybody. Uh, it'll be a nuclear night type of, of deal. It's, it'll be a an earth-shattering, cataclysmic type of event. And so again, we have to look, so God's going to suspend uh, the laws he put in place, and now he's going to do another miracle to keep people alive. Um, it, it's kind of interesting. Again, think about this. There's other passages in scriptures that says, the and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Um, it's interesting that if we look back in scripture, in the Old Testament, we see things where it talks about uh, how the stars, the sun, the moon, uh, represent nations. And that's why you see like actors and actresses when it says when their star has risen, they've come to fame, they've come to the top of their game. Countries uh, and their flags use many stars and celestial uh, symbols and signs in their flags. And I mean, we've got it on our flag, the stars and stripes. But when those stars fade and wane, that means that that country, and you look back, and if you do an exhaustive study of it, you'll see in the Old Testament that that is in reference to when, uh, you know, nations aren't doing well. You know, they're not following God. They're not being obedient. They're doing sinful things, and they're continuing to go away from God and His Word. And that uh, when judgment comes, there's, there's the star uh, wanes, or the, 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 the sun, the moon, the heavens uh, drain or, or become weak. Uh, you kind of get the idea. I don't have time to go into all of it right now. And it said, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Uh, that's another thing that if you look at the Old Testament, you'll see some of these things. And it's uh, scripture interprets scripture. 
Now again, I'm not saying this 100%, but it's interesting that we see these same elements in the Old Testament, and yet we have gone far from that and said, well, you know, the sun's going to be darkened, so God's going to kind of keep people alive for the seven years of tribulation or after the tribulation, or, you know, there's not going to be any sun, so it's going to kill all the plants, and it's going to get really, really cold, and, you know, see what I'm saying? Uh, people don't look at things with common sense anymore. A lot of them don't, especially the false teachers and false prophets. It says, then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Uh, and then he will send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds from the farthest part of the earth to the farthest part of heaven. Um, we have to be careful that when we talk about uh, looking at the end times of the tribulation, the second coming, that we don't read into things that our pastor has said because that's what was passed on to him. Rather, we need to study to rightly divide the Word of God. We need to, to look at what it says rather than what the guy on the pulpit sometimes says. Now, I'm not saying that all pastors are like that, but many are. Uh, Jesus goes on for the fig tree. He says, you know, you know when the shoots are tender and the leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things happening, you know it is near at the doors. In other words, it's quickly, it's like the door is right, is right there. I can grasp that door. It's not something that has given, uh, you know, thousands and thousands of years, as some people say. The time is at hand. It's at near, quickly. Uh, we see all these terms in regards to the second coming and the tribulation and end times and things. And it says that, As surely I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away until all these things take place. Again, this Greek term, this generation, when it's used in all other places, refers to the people that Jesus was talking and speaking and teaching and rebuking at that time. But unfortunately, there's a lot of people today that will take this and say, well, it means a future generation, thousands of years into the future. Um, it's interesting because why, then why is the definition uh, suddenly changed? Um, when Jesus is talking uh, to his disciples and to the believers. Again, we have to look at what Scripture says and, and think, you know, well, maybe this is what happened in AD 70. Maybe it still happens into our future. But the main thing that we need to look at and remember is that we need to watch. Um, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. And we know that God, that Jesus is the Word of God. The Word was with God and was God, and in the beginning was the Word. So uh, we need to be very careful. Now Jesus gives this next part. He says, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. So many people, uh, false prophets, false teachers, will say, well, the rapture is going to be on this day. The end of the world is going to be on this day. Harold Camping. Uh, so many instances of people saying that the rapture is going to be on this day or the end of the world is going to be on this day. And Scripture says of that day and hour, no one knows. So when somebody says they've nailed down the, the exact day of when the rapture is going to hit or the exact day of when uh, the earth is going to be destroyed, that ought to be a big red flag. It says, take heed, watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. You do not know when the time is. Uh, but yet these people will say they have additional revelations from God, that the hidden things are being, being brought out, these revelations and uh, stuff like, well, the books of heaven are closed in 1988. I mean, there's so much crazy uh, stuff going on that we need to, to test everything. Uh, anyway, it says, watch therefore that you do not know when the master of the house is coming in the evening or whatever. Uh, and I say, and what I say to you, I say to all, watch. In other words, um, he gave authority to his servants and to each his work and commanded the doorkeeper to keep watch. That's what we need to do in our lives as believers is to keep watch, to do the work that we're called to do on what type of ministry it is, uh, whether it's just praying, whether it's uh, putting feet to our faith and helping those in need, giving to those uh, who need help. Uh, whatever the case is, God has given you a gift and an ability to even just a witness uh, of Jesus Christ and his word and the gospel. Um, and what God has done uh, to take away the sins of the world. So anyway, don't be caught short. Keep watch and uh, be careful of the false teachers and the false prophets because uh, many are going to be going down that road that leads to destruction. Only few will make it to that uh, narrow road that leads to salvation. So take care. God bless. Peace.